Welcome to my lecture online. Now things are getting to be a little bit more interesting. Here we have the two parametric equations, but they involve exponential functions. x equals e to the t minus 1 and y equals e to the 2t. And we're asked to find the function y as a function of x. How do we do that? Well, there's different techniques we can employ, so let's try a few of those. Let's try uh, technique number one, method one. What we're going to do here is, since this is a simpler function, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we take the natural log of y equals the natural log of e to the 2t, which means that the natural log of y is equal to, this negates that, 2t, which means that t is equal to 1 half the natural log of y. So what we could do is we could take this and plug it in over here for t, however, we can probably simplify that a little bit more. So one half the natural log of y can be written as t is equal to the natural log of y to the one half, and then we can write that t is equal to the natural log of the square root of y. Of course, that's the same thing, but now when we take this and substitute it in here, let's see what we get. So now we take this and plug it in here, we get x is equal to e to the t, but t is equal to the natural log of the square root of y, so that's the natural log of the square root of y minus 1, then again e to the natural log that negates, and we get x is equal to the square root of y minus 1. Now we're almost there because we don't want x in terms of y, we want y in terms of x. So what we're going to do is move the negative one over. So we have uh, the square root of y is equal to x plus 1. And now when we square both sides, we get y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And so here we have the equation we're looking for. Now we could do something slightly different. What we could do instead is the following. So let's go over here. We'll try method 2. And so what we're going to do here is uh, take the square root of both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of y is equal to the square root of e to the 2t. Now the square root of e to the 2t is simply e to the t, so we can say the square root of y is equal to e to the t, and then we can come up here and replace e to the t by the square root of y. So when we take this equation down here, we can now write that x is equal to, instead of e to the t, we write the square root of y minus 1, and again, we do the square root of y is equal to x plus 1, or y is equal to the square root of x plus 1, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1. So either method will get us the correct equation. Now let's go ahead and compare things a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in some values for t and get corresponding values for y, and then we're going to relate t to x. Let's see, where can we do that? Uh, let's see here. Well, right here, we can find the values for x in terms of uh, t, and then we're going to plug those values for x into y to see if we have indeed the correct equation. So let's set up a table of values. So we're going to plug in some t's, we're going to get corresponding x's, we're going to get corresponding y's. So let's try that. So first of all, let's just do t and y. If t is equal to 0, then e to the 0 is 1, so y is equal to 1. If t is equal to 1, then y would be e to the 2t, which would be e to the second power. So 2 e to the second power gives us 7.4 approximately. So it's approximately 7.4. And when t is equal to 2, uh, let's see, then uh, y would be e to the fourth. So 4 e to the fourth is uh, 54.6. So approximately 54.6. And if t is equal to 3, we get uh, that 6. E to, the, uh, e to the 6 would be 403.4, so approximately 403.4. All right, so now to see that we have the right equation, let's see now, let's, if t is equal to 3, what's the proper value for x? So let's use this equation right here. So x, when t is equal to 3, is equal to e to the 3 minus 1. 
So e to the 3 minus 1, so 3, take that, that gives the uh, 20.08 minus 1 equals, that gives us equal to 19.0855. All right, so when t is equal to 3, x is equal to 19.0855. Again, that's approximate, of course, to do four decimal places. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug that value in for here to see if we get the same value over here that we got there. So y when x is equal to 19.0855 is equal to, so now we're using this equation, and again the reason why we're doing that is to make sure that this is indeed the correct equation, so we should get the same value. So we get 19.055 squared, so we square that value, plus 2 times 19.0855 plus 1 equals, and I get approximately 403.4. So you can see that you get the exact same value, which means that this is the correct equation representative of these two parametric equations we were given in the first place. So again, you can see that when you're given some more complicated equations, it's a little bit more difficult to find the appropriate function y in terms of x, but it can be done, and often there's different methods. So there's no one particular method, you just kind of struggle until you get the right answer, and that's how it's done.